Hi Pace members, uh, today I'm going to talk about playing in the pocket and the things I practice to get good at it. Uh, I'm going to be doing this in reference to uh, a tempo and a tune of mine called Wayne's, uh, the same tempo. Um, and it's a straight funky thing that's on my last album. And um, so let's get started. So uh, I wrote this tune with a sort of drum loop in mind. Uh, which I'll play a bit later, but I think it's really important um, to, when, especially when you're playing groove and f kind of funk stuff, is to play along with a, a kick and a, just a kick and a snare without the hi hats, without anything in between. So you can really get used to where the sixteenth notes fall, and you can hear the placement of them. So I've got, I've, I've uh, programmed just a kick and a snare, and I'm going to just. First thing I'm going to do is just going to play 16th notes and 8th notes with my right hand, making sure that's kind of locking in uh, straight, hopefully straight. I'm not worrying about the notes um, and uh, just focusing on the right hand. So there's the one, so I see. The next stage. Get that sounding good. Next stage would be to improvise with rhythms with, with the 16th notes and 8th notes and make sure they're kind of locked in. Um, and so I, I, I'm really, um, I guess, sort of listening feeling that I, I, I definitely am not conscious of being too on top of the beat. I, th I think I, where I hear it and feel it is slightly laid back maybe and there's probably a tiny bit of degree of swing in there but not, I'm not trying to do that. So I mean the feel comes from doing this with great pockets and great drummers and playing along to records and developing your own sort of feel with the musicians that you play with. Um, so that's something that sort of develops over time but listen to the music and play along and understand the uh, understand the pocket. Anyway, so the next day, uh, another stage is uh, a good thing about just using one and three is that you can experiment with really swinging the bass lines too, right? Uh, so, the four. between swing and straight. Make sure that you know what you're doing and you're not kind of in no man's land and just going in between. You know, there's a real, you know, especially with, with swing, with kind of funk, it's really accented, you know, it's really strong. So the next stage is adding some notes, but again, it's just simple notes, just one note, just, just make one note sound good. I'll, I'll play straight. Then I might add some muted notes. few more notes there but really start simply just play with one or two notes and make sure it's locked in and I was kind of out and I could feel it when I was slightly not easy with the rhythm or wrong with the rhythm um, so now I'm gonna add this other drum loop which um, I used actually to try to compose this tune Wayne's and I sent to the drummer actually before I recorded it to try and emulate that you know the, the groove and the feel so um, this is the groove I'm just adding it on to the one and three. Now this has obviously got hi hats and stuff, and it forces me more in a straight direction. I don't know whether I said this, but it's, it's good to vocalize things as much as possible, you know. Um, 
downbeats in funk, which I like, you know, red, don't push everything, downbeats and sit, sit. Um, now, uh, I, another thing I didn't really talk about, which it sometimes stumps me, and I've definitely got into bad habits with this, especially on electric, because I'm still figuring some stuff out, is, is, is know what volume you are playing. You know, some, try and doing these things at three different volumes at least, so you can have that control when you want to play louder and you can still keep the time. Now, um, with Wayne's, um, uh, there's, a, there's a tricky bass line, actually in the bridge, it's very simple, but it's very tricky. So I definitely sort of um, had to be uh, aware of practicing this, probably should have done it more. Well, so it's like just anticipating. Now I find myself hitting the note before. Now uh, I, I, um, I do a lot of that, this kind of hitting and muting here. Uh, so I wanted to practice that. So maybe I just do this. Uh, beats. Um, so that's so that's that baseline there, and actually uh, um, I do a lot of this left hand kind of muting too, but maybe not in this tune. And I have a book coming out which will describes that. So so there's a lot of that, um, which is going to be out in my new book. Anyway, um, getting back to Wayne's. Now that's the bridge. That's hard. Now I'm going to play the A section of Wayne's, which is kind of a syncopated bass line. But just with the back, so you can hear um, where it lands. Let's see how this sounds. This way. It's... Okay. One, two, three. So really locking in with that groove. I mean, I, I think that's a really nice um, groove called Midnight Break. I got it on Logic. Um, um, so uh, yeah, that was that was Wayne's, and that's locking in with the pocket. Really focusing on the rhythm first, as always. Getting those sixteenth notes strong. Vocalizing. Differentiate. Make sure that you know what swing the swing is, how it related to the straight. Um, and that's that's basically the lesson. One other last thing I'll say is um, sort of not really related is that baseline I wrote um, came about me just improvising along with this groove, and I recorded it, and then I chopped it up and and came up with that baseline. And it was a good process because it was like, you know, I was really improvising baselines, and some of them were all fallen out of time. Some of them were like sounds were really interesting and some and felt really unfamiliar to me. Um, because I was really improvising them, and um, then I made them unfamiliar. I made them more familiar by putting them in a tune. Anyway, so um, yeah, that's uh, playing in the pocket. Really, uh, really, you know, get the rhythm locked in. Thanks so much. Bye.